This is the Sony 20mm f1.8 ultra wide angle G lens. That's right, 20mm f1.8. And it's literally this tiny. By the way, a portion of this video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, your premier source for the latest Sony Alpha news. Sony is rolling out with their first full frame lens of 2020, and uh, it's kind of fitting. 2020, 20 millimeter. Anyways, the price is gonna be 899 US dollars. The pre-order should be happening this week. I'll have a link in the description box below for the pre-order. And I believe they'll be shipping out the first week of March. I'm predicting this is gonna be a hot lens for a lot of Sony users. So it might be impossible to get if you don't pre-order right away. Up until now, the widest and the fastest prime lens that we have from Sony is a 24 millimeter F 1.4 G Master. And when this was first announced back Back in 2018, it was back ordered till the following year. I didn't get mine until the end of November. It has since been a lot more accessible. I've been seeing it on the shelves of many camera stores that I've walked into. And by many, there's only one or two that I actually go to around the area. But anyways, what is the 20 millimeter f1.8 good for and who should be considering this lens? Pros will know all the potential use cases for a 20 millimeter, but personally, I think casual users are going to have the most fun with this lens. 20 millimeter, obviously fantastic for landscape and selfies, full frame quality selfies, because who has the time to take out their phone for a quick smartphone selfie, am I right? Get that nasty 12 megapixel poo poo out of here. But in all seriousness, selfie is a form of environmental portraits. So yeah, 20 millimeter, fantastic for some environmental portraits. People who travel a lot especially will enjoy this. This will allow them to show more of the places that they've been to while still retaining a little bit of themselves in the photo as well. The 20 millimeter does have a slight macro capability, not exactly one to one, but you can get pretty darn close to your subject. And because of that fast f1.8 aperture, it is fantastic for low light and for night shots. And actually, I think astrophotographers might like the wider aspect of the 20 millimeter in comparison to the 24 millimeter in terms of how well this does for corner to corner sharpness compared to the 24 millimeter. I'm going to have to wait and find out. Might just have to hit up my buddy Stan Moniz again. We did uh, some astrophotography with the 24 millimeter a couple years ago, but uh, he might have something about the 20 millimeter and the star pretty soon. Follow him on Instagram at Stan Moniz. He might have an update pretty soon. But for now, you know, I can fake some stars with Luminar 4. Ooh, look at that Milky Way. In terms of video, the 20 millimeter is a fantastic candidate for vlogging. It's much more manageable compared to the 24 millimeter where it's a little bit tight unless you have a uh, long gorilla pot or extremely long giraffe arms. Again, 20 millimeter is much more manageable. Ultra wide angle lenses are also fantastic for gimbal work and this is light enough so you can fly it on lighter gimbals like the Weeble S and the Ronin SC. Plus the tracking autofocus should be excellent because after all, this lens is designed by Sony. However, I will have a more standard autofocus test once I get the retail copy of the 20 millimeter. This one that I have right here is a production press copy sample unit thing. So I don't think it's fair to evaluate the autofocus performance of this lens quite yet. But I've actually used this for the past couple of weeks for autofocus, for photo autofocus. It is great. I've been using this to shoot a couple YouTube videos as well, and the autofocus tracking is fantastic. So the 20 millimeter is actually much smaller and lighter compared to the 24 millimeter G Master, which is insane because when the 24 millimeter came out, it is groundbreaking for its size and what it can do. The 20 millimeter is 92 grams lighter, but it's still keeping the 67 millimeter filter thread, which I like a lot. That means I can share the same filters across all the lenses that I use. And 67 millimeter, in my opinion, is the sweet spot for the size of a mirrorless full frame lens. That's still light, 
portable, and small enough while maintaining a relatively fast aperture. And drop in the comments down below if you're debating whether or not you should get the 20 millimeter or the 24 millimeter. If there are a lot of people who are interested, I might do a direct comparison between the two lenses. Now, for those of you who are wondering what's the difference between the G and the G Master, the G is a tier below the G Master. The G Master lenses resolves better quality on high megapixel cameras. So if you have an A7R4, A7R3, A7R anything, the quality of using a G Master lenses on that camera, on those types of cameras, would be a lot better compared to using a standard lens. But for most people, G lenses are more than good enough, especially if you're shooting with a 24 megapixel like the A7, A7 II, or the A7 III. To be completely honest with you guys, I can't tell the difference between a G or a G master lens like 90% of the time, unless I like blow it up on a 5K monitor and super pixel peep really hard in Lightroom, that's when I can tell a slight difference. But if you're showing me two photos side by side on a small dinky monitor like an iPad, there is no way I can tell. So, could this be the year of ultra wide angle fast lenses from Sony? In 2019, we see an influx of telephoto lenses coming from Sony. We got the 135G Master, the 200 to 600 millimeter lens, and the 600 millimeter f2.8 prime lens of a beast. Which, those are cool, those are fantastic for sports and wildlife, but we were still severely lacking in the ultra wide angle fast lens department. They've hit a home run with the 24 millimeter G Master, but we haven't seen anything else since then. So the 20 millimeter F1.8 right now seems to be a good start. Personally, I like to see Sony come out with a 14 millimeter F1.8, similar to what Sigma has, but obviously much smaller and lighter. And I think Sony can make that possible. Again, the copy of the lens that I have right here is not the final version, but once I get my hands on the retail copy of the 20 millimeter, I'll have a more extensive review as well as some direct comparisons with it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the 20 millimeter F1.8 and if it's something that you'll be picking up. Guys, thank you so much for watching, but before you go, so I've been using Squarespace for about three years now and what keeps me coming back is the ease of use. It is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful and clean websites. No coding knowledge is required thanks to the easy to use templates. For 2020, Vivian and I will be adding additional photography and videography resources to our website. So definitely stay tuned to see our progress and our announcement. For now, you can try Squarespace yourself. Whether it's a photo portfolio website you can send to your client or an e-commerce for your products, design it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com slash Jason Vong to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks for listening to this message. It does really help my channel out a lot. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.